So today I want to talk about some of the training methods found in the Filipino martial arts, or FMA. So right off the bat, I'm going to be making a bunch of big generalities. Much as the Philippines themselves are comprised of a variety of distinct histories and cultures, Filipino martial arts is a blanket term that covers a bunch of different styles and approaches to training. So I'm just going to be broadly covering some of what I think are the most common, so that when you see Filipino martial arts, maybe you can have a better understanding of what's going on. Filipino martial arts are often considered to be weaponry-based systems. You typically see it practiced with rattan sticks. Already we're getting into generalities, right? I know that for anything that I talk about in this video, it may not apply to your style, it may not apply to the terminology that you use or how you like to train, but broadly speaking, FMA or weaponry arts, they tend to train with rattan sticks. This is not a rattan stick, but you can do Filipino martial arts drills with a lot of different stuff. And I tend to think that people who don't train a lot of FMA, when they think of FMA, they think specifically of like the double stick Heaven Six coordination drill, probably because it's been in a bunch of movies and TV shows, but there's a lot of different methods. That, that's one drill from one training method, and there's a lot of different common training methods. One pretty common method is with paired striking drills. Stuff like your Sinawali or weaving patterns fit into this. This is like that Heaven Six drill that you see all the time, but it's any time that two people have their implements and they're both doing sort of the same striking patterns and meeting in the middle like Benjamin Button. I have been told I should stop making that reference. But these sort of paired striking drills are a pretty common way, usually just to work coordination with another partner, because you're both doing the same thing. There's not really like clear attack and defense. You're both working on the structural mechanics, perhaps, of how to hit, get a little bit of grip work and coordination, as you're just learning to manipulate the sticks. So the first method that we're talking about out of four is paired striking. Now, one of the big critiques whenever you see paired striking drills done kind of in isolation is that it's not sparring. First of all, I, I know it's not sparring. And second of all, keep that critique in mind as we go through our various training methods. Yes, paired striking drills are not sparring. I know. Another common training method involves one person feeding lines of attack repeatedly, sort of a one-sided feeder, feeding lines of attack, and the other person consistently learning to integrate their movements and their defense against those lines of attack. Things like your abisidario play fits into this framework, where one person is consistently feeding and the other person is consistently defending. Sometimes these methods are a little bit more structured or a little bit more choreographed, but they still tend to rely on one person continuously and dynamically feeding attacks while the other person responds to those attacks fluidly. Again, learning to integrate their weapon, their angles, and their defenses against that numbering system or angle system or, or methods of attack. Another very common training method is a counter for counter, things like your sombrata play. So in this method, instead of one person always attacking, you're trading attacks and defenses back and forth. You're usually still learning to integrate against attacks, but you're immediately turning those defenses into offensive motions as well. This is typically done to educate like common counterattack lines and just a, a way to fluidly and dynamically get a lot of reps in on what those basic responses should be. So while this method tends to be pretty spontaneous, like you're responding to whatever line they have to do, you're, you're defending and then feeding a counter line, it's still relatively cooperative. Again, this is not sparring, right? None of the methods that we've talked about so far have been sparring. I, I know that. Another common training method that is used in the Filipino martial arts, this is the fourth one we've talked about, is, you guessed it, sparring. Yeah, so, so we actually do spar, believe it or not. Filipino martial arts, sparring is one of the methods you use to train, right? So usually with appropriate safety gear, whatever appropriate means to you, but in this case, you're actually trying to work dynamically and functionally against somebody else. I don't think I need to explain sparring too much. Um, you're working against the other person, mutually exclusive goals, but sparring is a common training method, part of the training that we'll undergo in Filipino martial arts. So to quickly review, that's four different training methods that I want to cover. Like, th there's a lot more to it, right? But the, the four that we basically went over in this video is 
paired striking, the two people are more or less doing the same thing and hitting in the middle, solo feeder based where one person is consistently feeding attacks and the other person is responding to those attacks, learning to integrate their defense against those offensive feeds, counter for counter where you're trading the roles of attacker and defender continuously back and forth as you work on spontaneous angles, and sparring where you're actually trying to apply your skills right against somebody who's resisting your efforts. So those are four ways that you can train partner exercises in the Filipino martial arts, and they're pretty different. One of the things I love about FMA is how many different permutations there are on those basic methods, though. Any of those methods can be played with different intention, different intensity, with different techniques, and a lot of styles do that in different ways. Take the single solo feed training method, right? What some call abisodario, for instance. In some styles, that's done very fluidly, almost dance-like. And in other styles, they're looking at an intentionality and a technique that is specifically designed to be as functional as possible and work people towards sparring. And there's everything in between, right? So even with just these four training methods, there's a bunch of different ways that you can manipulate them. And you'll notice I haven't even picked up the classic rattan stick for this entire explanation, like I'm showing it in the clips, right? But why is that? Well, that's just a tool. It, it doesn't make Filipino martial arts what it is. You can apply Filipino martial arts training principles with a bunch of different tools and a bunch of different weapon platforms. Or maybe it's because inexplicably every single rattan stick I own is not here. It's in at my teaching space. That's another thing that I think is super fun about FMA. Um, personally, I'm not interested in wringing maximum combative effectiveness out of every single moment of my training time. And a lot of these methods give me and my training partners and my students the opportunity to explore different weapon platforms in a way that is engaging and fun, and depending on how you use safety equipment and modulate intensity, pretty safe. So I think it's great. I think it's cool stuff. Um, useful for a lot of different applications uh, in a lot of different ways. So if you haven't tried some Filipino martial arts before, check it out. Go, go find a teacher and learn some cool stuff and be aware that there are a lot of different training methods and you don't need to be stuck in a rut. Um, have fun. Play with sticks and swords. It's fun. Do it safely. Right? Yeah.